Hello guys and welcome back to the Zane Investing. AMC stock is in a state of limbo, with a modest bullish uptrend leading up to Friday's earnings report. And we will discuss what has historically transpired with AMC. You tend to rally occasionally before earnings, but typically after earnings. And this income will be significantly more significant than your average income with AMC. Therefore, we will discuss all of this and what it implies for the upcoming week in terms of AMC stock, as well as my personal opinion regarding the future direction of AMC stock. Remember that I have exchanges on this item. With options and diamond distributing shares, the risk-to-reward ratio for AMC appears to be very favorable. That is the crucial point here. I do not believe so. A trade must necessarily involve the shares. I do not wish to invest here. I do not wish to compromise here. I intend to acquire and possess assets until the end of the world. However, with some of these options, you can obtain great leverage, not financial advice. Obviously, options can and frequently do expire at zero. Hence, bear this in mind. Let's now delve into all of this vital information. If you are visiting for the first time, greetings, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sihai, and I am the creative investor or whatever you wish to call us. We keep you abreast of market developments. We will discuss broad economic data. We are discussing the Fed. We're discussing recession, not recession, earnings, and all of this excellent material. However, we also emphasize retail stocks such as AMC that have the potential to generate profits in the short, medium, and long term. Now, let's discuss everything you must know about this week. You must pause before beginning this video because there is so much content. So first things first, I believe that this will be the largest headline that strikes tomorrow morning. There has been a bidding process, though not necessarily an auction, in which institutions have indicated their willingness to acquire First Republic. First Republic is currently in a precarious position due to the loss of numerous deposits. Last quarter, they were profitable, but their current balance sheet is unfavorable because they are losing deposits. In essence, what has transpired here is that they have purchased bonds at the peak of the market. Right. Bond prices have declined as bond yields have increased. The company's entire portfolio is comprised of bonds that were purchased at a much higher price than their current value. If these bonds were acquired, the company's losses would be realized and the company would go insolvent. Therefore, they are being acquired because First Republic has no chance of survival. I believe this is why they are being acquired because it appears that there will be some sort of acquisition offer. Not having one is not inherently a positive development. Now, if an acquisition actually occurs, equity markets may view this as a negative. Consider that a portion of the 17% increase in the Nasdaq since the beginning of 2023 can be attributed to the fear that the banking crisis will prompt the Fed to reduce interest rates sooner. This is favorable for long-term equities and assets, according to the Fed. Keeping interest rates elevated for an extended period is detrimental. People believe that if the banking crisis occurs, the Fed will reduce interest rates sooner. This may be favorable so long as it only affects regional banks. Well, if there is no further banking crisis, if First Republic is acquired, and it's over, you didn't see enough financial duress to warrant Fed rate cuts, which could be bearish given the recent market rally. Why then? Because earnings are decent, not because they are improving. Micron recently disclosed their lowest ever earnings. Intel recently reported its lowest earnings ever. Amazon reports that AWS is decelerating by 500 basis points in the current quarter. Apple's earnings are likely to stink. Microsoft's earnings are also mediocre. Google's revenues are mediocre. There are equities that are outperforming the market. In addition to poor expectations, earnings estimates are also declining. The only reason markets have been rising is because of this narrative predicting a Fed rate cut by 2023's conclusion. Therefore, this will be essential. Now, underline each of these details. We'd have just condensed an entire video of information into the last four or five minutes. Take this information with you throughout the remainder of this video and incorporate it into various data points. Regarding the impending economic downturn, we will only discuss the major events that will occur. On Monday, you should not expect much. You will get, um, let's see where we stand. Thus, today is Friday. Let's move forward to Monday. There will be SM Manufacturing PMI. 
There will be a reaction to this on Monday morning, but it won't be an enduring one unless you're significantly above or below estimates. Keep in mind that here, it's all about the estimates. So if you're anticipating 50 on the PMI, it arrives at 60. This is going to be excellent. Inversely, if you expect 50 and receive 40 or 30, it is significantly below your expectations. This is what will propel you with economic data. If it meets expectations, I anticipate an initial spike or decline, but the markets will consume it regardless of the direction. On Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m., we anticipate 9.7 million job openings to be announced. On Wednesday, you will receive ISM Services, PMI, and you anticipate that to be 51.5. Anything above 50 is considered positive. Therefore, you need to see deflation in services. That's probably not a positive thing if it arrives hot right now. This is the week's most significant catalyst, which could send stocks such as AMC and broad markets soaring or plunging dramatically on Wednesday. Wednesday at 2 o'clock p.m. will be the announcement of the Fed's interest rate decision. You can therefore trade this if you so choose. We know they're going to raise rates by a quarter of a percentage point, but it's essential what their guidance is and how clear they are, as markets are anticipating a pause. If the Fed says, yes, we're still data dependent, the risks are much more to the upside, meaning that rates will have to rise from here on out, not fall. So why is this so crucial? Why do we simply list everything that will occur this week that could affect the markets? In recent times, AMC stock has a tendency to outperform on both good and poor days. Not to sound permeable, but if the markets are up 2%, AMC tends to be up between 4.5 and 5.6%. If the market is down 1%, AMC is typically down less than 1%. I believe this has a lot to do with the collateral requirements, particularly on days when the broad markets are performing poorly. AMC underperforms because hedge funds are required to deposit additional collateral into their short positions or hedge out their short positions. So, ladies and gentlemen, this video has reached its conclusion. Click the like icon. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and post your comments, queries, or concerns in the section below. If you do not comprehend anything said in this video or if you need to watch it again, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you do so. I tend to speak quickly, cramming a great deal of information into a short period of time. I would strongly advise you to re-watch this video in order to completely absorb and comprehend the content. It will make you stronger investors, and when events occur, you will be able to process them and determine whether they are bullish or bearish. Are you significantly more adverse than the average retail investor? That concludes it. We appreciate your viewing. Enjoy the remainder of your day, and I will see you tomorrow.